Hey guys, this is Wolfie here with a special presentation. I'm using um, the the images you see here from the city of Final Fantasy after Anya because it kind of it actually does relate to what I'm going to be going going through here. So you can notice here there are three particular characters on the screen to the left, which is Celeste Share from Final Fantasy VI, Claire Lightning Fear from, from the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy, and Amber Yung Fang from the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. <laughs> uh, the reason why I have this, like as as you see it. Is because some of the backs, the, the, the backstories actually have some similarities, and by that word, the wording. So we're gonna go over just how Celeste, in my opinion, her backstory has bits and pieces of the such in both lightning and face. So I'm gonna go through each background story for each character on one by one, and. Hopefully, by the second half of this video, it's going to be the connecting the dots in sense of where the wording is similar between the three. Now, we're going to go over Final Fantasy VI's Celeste Shear. So, we're going to go over the guide, which is as thus, a gifted and specially trained military woman of the Castalian Empire. Imbued with magical energy at a young age, she would go on to win countless battles as an undefeated general. In time, however, she came to question the foolishness of war and rebelled against the Empire. After meeting Locke, she joined the Returners in their fight against Kafka. So they, now you notice here they left out a few things. She was responsible for the attack in the area. I forgot the name of the town where Locke is from. Supposedly was the one that, result, that resulted in Rachel... Lock, Locke's ex dying at, in the aftermath of such. She was following orders from the Gestalian Emperor blindly. And it took the questioning about poisoning Doma's waters that had her labeled as a traitor. She was sentenced to death for treason because she spoke up against poisoning Doma's waters. So... With that out of the way, we're going to go into Lightning. A former sergeant of the Guardian Corps that goes by the name of Lightning. In an effort to save her one and only sister, she gives up everything she has to battle against destiny. While her unsociable demeanor once made her seem unapproachable, she realizes that she is not alone during her journey, ultimately opening her heart to others. Again, this is another one of those... Leaving a few things out. She, the thing is with the Guardian Corps, they're part of the Kikunian government. And with the Kikunian government, they were part of like the whole bit of enforcing, well, not what it's saying enforcing laws, but making sure that things were going as operated. Lightning was doing her job blindly without questioning things. It took Sarah's game branded as a Grand Pulse Lassie that had Lightning having a change of heart. And the way she, Lightning found out was the very hard way. And again, it took something that drastic for Lightning to change her too. Now, you notice, like, you see, if you notice at the end of the Final Fantasy 13 one, you notice that everything seems to be happy. Bittersweet to be more accurate. Bittersweet because Lightning's being reunited with Sarah as the Snow being reunited with S Sarah, along with Saz and Dodge being reunited, but it came at a heavy price. Vanille and Fang went back into Crystal Stasis for the second time. And the reason why I say it's bittersweet because in some time, at some point in Final Fantasy 13 2, Lightning reveals that it was moment, it was Shortly after that, re the reunion was short-lived. Meaning that Lightning was erased from history by being sent to Valhalla to guard Etro, the, the now former goddess of death. And it took, it ultimately took Sarah somehow, some way, or somebody else, somebody, please, somebody please correct me here. It either took Lightning saving herself at the very end of Lightning Returns, or something about Sarah 
So the well, Siri had a very big role in saving lightning. Preventing lightning preventing from lightning from becoming the got new goddess of death, making sure she gets to live with the with the, the other humans. At the end of it all. Now with Erba Yung Fang, her story here is a compassionate and frank warrior with a fierce temperament. She is the type to act before she speaks. She's deeply devoted to her friends and home and above all the Neil. Fang would readily make enemies of anyone and everyone if it were necessary to protect her childhood friend. Yes, Fang and the Neil are childhood friends. That's the only thing that's conferred by the people behind the Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. Because Rachel Robinson, who is Fang's English voice actress, had a somewhat contradicting opinion on Fang and Vanille's relationship. As opposed to, I forgot the guy's name, but he's behind the making of the trilogy. Because the guy, like I said, I forgot his name, but he did mention that while... The whole thing between Fang and Finneal are is open-ended, meaning that it's up to the individual player. He would be happy if players saw them as a couple. Now, Rachel Robinson has been quoted saying that, yes, it's open-ended, up to the individual player. However, Fang sees Vanille as more like a younger sister slash sibling as opposed to anything else. And I'm and this is not word for word. I'm just pretty much summarizing what she exactly said about this. So yes, the thing with Fang and Vanille is up to the individual player. Now, with the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy, it is it is Fang's and Vanille's actions being the reason why the trilogy is present in the first place. Now, the reason why I say it like that because Vanga and Vanille are Grand Pulsia natives. With Fang in particular, she became Ragnarok. She caused an indentation on Cocoon's surface, meaning that Fang and Vanille did not truly complete their focus. <clears throat> which was to destroy Kaku. Now, during the War of Transgressions, which is 500 years before the events of Final Fantasy XIII, Fang was actually sentenced to death for blasphemy over the matter because she was not into fighting Kaku unless they, unless it was deemed necessary. And it was because, you know, hers Fang speaking up about this matter, she got sentenced to death, and it was Vanille who actually saved Fang. So, you know, because families, you know, sticking up for each other, all that. However, you know, if some people don't think about the events of 13, you know, the arguing line, all that stuff. However, if you notice how Fang was towards Vanille during the events of 13, some people would consider that, would probably consider that as abusive. So, it's something that's very unhealthy in a relationship. So, to go back here real quick. So, the whole thing with Celeste and Fang. Those two have, the connecting dots with those two, believe it or not, is through the, is the fact that they were both sentenced to death and they were saved by somebody else. Somebody close to them. Celeste and Lightning, they were following things blindly like no one else's business, it took something drastic for them to change their minds and fight for the opposite side and against the side they were originally on. And these three, I just love these three so much. It just, I just want to do a special video on these three. So now I'm going to sign off and signing off here. And this is Wolfie catching you all on the flip side.